over there today in just a short second we'll be taking a look at my technic unit behind me that i sorted in only one day it's crazy to think that i got it all done in a day's work and i really do think that i will not need to sort technic ever again which is an amazing feeling for any lego fan out there unless of course you are a fan of technic but I don't tend to use it as much before i start if you are new here i would appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button down below for more awesome lego content and i think we'll get straight into the video so if i take you over to the technic unit which is this top left one the reason being these are all sort of shoulder height and below so i can easily access these if i want certain plates or certain other modified plates and bricks, but I don't really use Technic that much. So I've actually got a stall here to access the Technic bits. You might be able to see my reflection. And that is simply because I don't find myself using Technic too much. Now, the first thing I did when sorting this was divided it into it, I guess, different poles of Technic. You can see there are some of these hinge pieces here We've also got some of these modified plates with the pin hole or the pin coming out. We've then got all our axles more or less in these three drawers. These are more miscellaneous, some gears, some other bits that didn't really fit. And I guess they sort of go with what's above them. And then we have all of our connectors and connector like pieces and then all of our pins on the top row. So I think we'll start with the pins row. That's what I did first. I broke down all of these different groups of pieces and there are some in the bigger drawers as well but first we started off with pins and actually the first lot of pins is down here it's my black sort of friction pins i believe these are they are frictionless again there's a video talking about the difference between friction and frictionless pins but as you can see i have a whole pile of these friction pins and i mean They've been used the longest out of all of them, so it does make sense. And just at the back, so we don't have to revisit, there are a few different turbine engines and that, just with all the different pin and axle holes. But if we take a look at the rest of them up here, not all of them are sharing like the first one. We do have the axles right at the back of these non-friction pins, which come in grey. There might be a few other colours that I don't think you can really spot from here, but they're mostly grey. The next three are modified pins. So on the left, we've got the triple pin. We've got the double-sided on one side. Then we have the half pin, half axle. Then we have a full draw of these modified pin pieces with the stud on the end. Not to be confused with the one and a half pin pieces, which are actually in the back here, you can see. These are just the other pieces. I've got the double pins with the axle holes. Then we basically have any other pin connection and these drawers are very sturdy they're kept in with a nice orange clip just at the back there which means they're not gonna slide out or i have no fear of them falling out especially at this height now next up we have the pin enders these bits at the front which are both single and double width which i didn't have enough of them to have separate drawers so i've whacked them in one half and then we have the flick fire missiles at the back which if we go all the way down to the, I think it's the bottom right corner, you can actually see that I've got all the flick fire missiles, the complete other end of the unit. So the original flick fire missiles are up there and the new ones, the stud shooters and everything else are down here. But these are definitely not Technic pieces. Now, if we take the elevator all the way back to the top, in fact, we're not going back to the top because now we're on to the connector pieces. And how I organize these is fairly straightforward. We've got the single pin covers at the front and then we have any with the axle pieces or bits sticking out. And then we have the two length, the double axle or pin connectors. They're pretty easy to identify which ones are which because the pin connectors are a bit more straight on the edges so i find that's fairly straightforward to distinguish between and then right next to that we have two drawers for the different angled axle connectors you can see at the back we sort of have the single ended ones then we have the 90 degree or 180 degrees at the front and then we have all the other degrees which i think there's like two or three different angles in here we have some more axle connectors the 90 degree sort of ones at the back 
And then we have a few mixed two width or like one by two, I guess, Technic pieces here, one by three here. And then we just have the other ones down here. These are all the ones that aren't the big rods and like these pieces here, I guess we'll go to these next because we have some one by two and one by threes at the front and then a few different ball joint pieces. Because if we go down to the bigger drawers here, you can see that we have the bigger bars and that is true for both of these drawers. I think this one here is one by five. That seems to be one by seven. Then we have one by nine and one by 11 because we can only fit 12 studs or I think we could probably get away with 13, but 12, 13 studs. I guess 13 does fit because over here we have the one by 13s. And then we have all the other longer axle pieces just behind that. They're the ones that don't fit in these drawers. So I guess we'll do them next. We have all the different axle pieces, which if you don't know, they do have different lengths based on their colors. So I've been able to mix in the two different lengths. So we've got the shorter two, then the next shorter two, then the next shorter two. And as I said, down here, we've got all of the longer ones sort of mixed, don't have too many of them. And then we've got some of the pieces with the sort of spacer on the end, the extra axle bit at the end. And these are all the modified axles. So then we've got the flat ones and then we've got the ones on the stud. It just enables me to grab which ones I need. And they're very well sorted out if I do need a specific axle. So it doesn't make it that hard to find the ones that I need, especially when building an older mock or an older set that requires these pieces. Next door, we have the flat connectors. We have all of them. These are just mixed. There's not too many of them, as you can see. We've even got the angled ones in there. And to finish off the row, we've got our gear drawer, which has a bunch of the smaller gears, a few of the bigger gears at the back. None of them too big because, well, I just didn't have many massive gears. But that brings us on to the bottom two rows, which were my favorite to sort because there's so many of them pieces. And there, as you can see, the pinholes, the hinges that have the teeth at the bottom. And if we take a look at the first two, they are full length drawers. I haven't split these because I had so many of them. We've got the one by two plate with the pinhole on top and the one by two plate that's got the pinhole at the bottom. And they definitely needed their own drawers. As you can see, there's so many, they about half fill each of the drawers. In fact, the left one even goes as far as two thirds, I would say. And then we're moving over to the next drawer. Some of these are a bit full up. So I might have to revisit these at some point because as you can see, it's a bit of a struggle to get this left one open, but it will open eventually. And you can see we got the two by fours at the front and then the modified two by twos with either the pin connection at the top or bottom. And then we have the two by two plates to the right here. Sorry if this is making too much noise on the mic. And we have the pinholes at the bottom. And then at the back, we have the double pinholes on the two by two underneath, which are really cool pieces for mocks. They're very similar. It really depends what you need them for. Then we have all of our other pin connectors and these are somewhat mixed. We've got the two by fours at the front with the two holes in the middle. And then as you saw at the front, we have the pin sticking up out of the top, which is a very interesting piece, mostly used for like helicopters and that. And then every other pin connector that you can find is in the back bit there. Now, as I said, these are a bit of a handful to try and close a lot of the time. So I might have to revisit how I group these up and I might have to move some of these to a bigger drawer, but for now they do what they're meant to, so I don't have too many problems. But on the bottom we have the toothed hinges and this is where it gets a little interesting because I didn't have as many drawers and was running out, but I've still managed to have two drawers for the first two, which you can sort of see what they are. So. I'm not going to try and name them myself. The third drawer is the one by two on the other angle. And then we have pretty much all of the others here, the longer four length ones and a few of the other ones at the back. We then have our Technic hinges with the teeth at the front with a few of the other similar pieces. And basically everything else that we couldn't fit in the big drawers is here. We've got the wheels at the back, which don't have any teeth for gears. And then a few of the other 
handles and spinny bits at the front. Now we get to the big drawers and you've already seen the pins, you've seen the longer bars, so we'll go with the modified bars. We've got some different angles here, we've got right angles at the front, then we have the, I think they're 45 degree angles, I don't exactly know, and at the back we have the more power miners and ATST angles which are two bends at 45 degrees and then all the other modified bits the t bars the i bars all at the front so this is very well organized and the fact that i've got a whole unit to spare to fill it i mean it's not exactly to spare i might need another unit eventually for all of these other pieces to sort out and divide into different tubs just like i've got my ball connectors here which take up a tub each but i do have a mixed tub in fact i have two mixed tubs in this unit these are more of the technic pieces you can see some of them still have their stickers from the sets which does make it fairly easy to identify and up top i have my mixed tub this is everything else that didn't fit in a different tub and of course i couldn't divide into one of the smaller ones and as you can see it's full up but there are just so many different things here that have a technic connector the We've got like some train wheels here and some different firing missile pieces. We've even got the wings of the Ninjago Dragon figure that I used for Anakin. And that means that our final draw has a few of the smaller wheels at the back, which I've actually got a few more to add to that. So that's going to look full. And then these other connector pieces, which we're seeing more and more, they're more and more common. And then a few... Well, we've got this one random piece that didn't fit in the tub on the right. So that is my entire Technic box. Hopefully this helps you to sort your own or you just wanted to see how I've sorted it out in only one day. I can't believe I got this done in only one day. I'm very happy with this. And this is every single Technic piece that I own that currently isn't in use. So thank you all for watching and may the bricks be with you always. Mm -hmm.